What's going on lovely people? It's Medicosis Perfectionatus where medicine makes perfect sense. This is my cardiology playlist. In previous videos we talked about diseases of the pericardium such as acute pericarditis, pericardial effusions, constrictive pericarditis, etc. We also talked about disease of the myocardium such as dilated cardiomyopathy, restrictive cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, chemically induced cardiomyopathy, and Takotsubo cardiomyopathy or broken heart syndrome. Today, it's yet another disease of the myocardium of the heart. It's acute myocarditis, inflammation of the heart muscle that happens acutely. Is it painful? Yes. Can it cause fever? Yes. Can it elevate my white blood cell count? Yes. Now hit the like button, click the subscribe button, and let's get started. This is my cardiology playlist. It has more than 100 cardiology videos. Back to basics, layers of the wall of my heart. On the inside, endocardium. In the middle, myocardium. On the outside, pericardium. Disease of the endocardium include endocarditis, such as bacterial endocarditis, fungal, viral, parasitic, etc. Next, we have the myocardium. We have myocarditis, myocardial infarction, and cardiomyopathy. Today, we're talking about myocarditis. Disease of the pericardium include pericarditis and pericardial effusion. What causes acute myocarditis? The most common cause is viral including what? Adenovirus, Parvo B19 virus, Coxsackie B virus, Hepatitis C virus, Epstein-Barr virus, Enteroviruses, and Human Herpes virus number 6. What are the other diseases caused by HHV6? Please comment below. Coronavirus can also lead to viral myocarditis. Vaccines against these viruses, since they have some viral proteins or they make your body make viral proteins, can also be associated with acute myocarditis or pericarditis. Bacteria, Staph aureus, Clostridium perfringens, tuberculosis, and Lyme disease. Fungi, Candida, Mucor, Histoplasmosis, Blastomycosis, and Aspergillus. Parasites, do not forget Trypanosoma cruzi or Chagas disease. Rheumatic fever can lead to pancarditis, meaning endocarditis and myocarditis and pericarditis. Autoimmune diseases, lupus, granulomatosis with polyangiitis, temporal or giant cell arthritis, Takayasu arthritis, Kawasaki disease, celiac disease, Sjogren and systemic sclerosis. Toxins like carbon monoxide, lead and diphtheria toxin. It causes myocarditis and peripheral neuropathy. If you have watched my diphtheria videos, in my microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. Postpartum, post-radiation, post-stem trail transplant can lead to myocarditis as well. And some medications can lead to myocarditis. If you want to see more cardiology videos, please drop a heart emoji in the comments. Do you want to understand myocarditis well? Bring a red pen and a blue pen and doodle with medicosis. Here's the right side of the heart. Here's the left side of the heart. Right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, and left ventricle. Let's go. If I have myocarditis, the myocardium is inflamed. Oops, now what? You have a right side of your heart and a left side of the heart, so let's draw the septum. If my right side is inflamed, what's going to happen? Well, it's going to be problematic to contract and pump blood. So what's going to happen if I cannot contract? Blood is going to pool. From the right side perspective, I get something upstairs, something downstairs, and something in the middle. Upstairs, jugular venous distension. Downstairs, lower extremity edema. In the middle, uh, hepatic congestion, also known as cardiac cirrhosis. This is what's going to happen to the right side. How about the left side of the heart? Well, 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 since the left ventricle cannot contract, blood is going to pile up in the left atrium, which will extend to the lungs. So I get pulmonary edema. I get wet crackles, also known as ral de la mort, which means rattles of death. Pleural effusion can happen. My patient can develop cough, dyspnea, orthopnea, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, hemoptysis, and repeated chest infections. Chest x-ray will show me bat wing sign, syphilization of the vasculature, and curly B lines. When I have systolic dysfunction, what's going to happen? I'm going to have low cardiac output symptoms. In my heart, angina. In my brain, presyncope, syncope, dizziness, confusion, obtundedness. And if it is so bad, I can even develop ischemic stroke. That was the brain. How about the kidney? Acute kidney injury, pre-renal azotemia. How about the liver? Ischemic hepatitis. 
How about the gallbladder? A calculus cholecystitis. How about my small intestine? I get mesenteric ischemia. How about the large intestine? I develop ischemic colitis. How about my fingers? Red, white, and blue. Raynaud's phenomenon. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Troponin, what is it? If you have watched my physiology playlist, in my muscle physiology videos, we've said what? Here is the cardiac muscle cell. What does it have inside? It has the cardiac troponins, especially the cardiac troponins like troponin I and troponin T. So here is my troponin. And this muscle of the heart is intact but what happens if it gets injured as in myocarditis or myocardial infarction then the troponin will leak to the outside world because when cell injury happens the membrane loses its permeability so troponin is now outside the cell in the extracellular fluid including the plasma so i get elevated serum troponin because troponin has left the chat, I mean left the cardiac myocyte and went to the outside world after the membrane got damaged from the myocarditis. Acute myocarditis, I have a heart that cannot perform systole properly. So the blood will pile up, right side of the heart will give me something upstairs, something downstairs, something in the middle. On the left side, I get pulmonary edema with wet crackles, dullness, cough, dyspnea, orthopnea, hemoptysis, curly B lines, and syphilization of the vasculature on chest x ray. So these are symptoms that mimic congestive heart failure. So I can also develop S3 gallop rhythm. What are the symptoms of low cardiac output that can happen? Because I cannot perform systole, low stroke volume, low ejection fraction, low cardiac output. And exercise intolerance, syncope, dizziness, fatigue, angina, and much more. Acute myocarditis. What are the causes? Infectious causes like viruses, autoimmune causes, drugs, toxins, and radiation. Don't forget rheumatic fever because it causes carditis. Signs and symptoms of congestive heart failure. Since it's acute myocarditis and usually the cause is viral, we have flu-like symptoms, muscle aches, fatigue, fever, leukocytosis, maybe S3 or S4 heart sound. Don't forget the pericardial friction rub, especially if we have pericarditis with it. Don't forget the chest pain if we have pericarditis with it. And there is persistent tachycardia out of proportion to the fever. The fever might be low grade, but the tachycardia is insane. However, if the cause of the myocarditis is Lyme disease, then we expect heart block with bradycardia, not tachycardia. Because of the myocardial muscle injury, I can get elevated serum troponins and CKMB. It's an itis, so ESR and CRP are elevated. Chest x-ray will show enlarged cardiac silhouette, EKG, non-specific findings, echo, systolic dysfunction, low ejection fraction, dilated hypokinetic chambers, which reminds me of dilated cardiomyopathy. Cardiac MRI can also help us diagnose this disease. Treatment is supportive care, rest and decreased activity, treatment of the underlying cause, treatment of the congestive heart failure. If the patient has heart failure, avoid NSAIDs. If it's not responding to therapy and the patient is young and there is a donor available, heart transplant. Most patients should be fine. However, in cases of giant cell myocarditis, death can happen within six months. Question of the day. Why should we avoid NSAIDs if the patient has heart failure? Please comment below. If you want to learn about angina, myocardial infarction, ischemic stroke, hemorrhagic stroke, ARDS, diabetic ketoacidosis, cardiac arrhythmias, and much more, then download my emergency medicine high yields course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. It comes with videos, notes, and cases. To learn about the Joxin, diuretics, antiarrhythmics, antianginal medications, antihypertensives, and others, download my cardiac pharmacology course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. There are more than 300 premium videos available to those who click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo, go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you'd like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.